So when Albert Einstein was 16 years old, he tried to do a thought experiment. He tried to imagine what it would be like to ride on a bicycle going the speed of light. The speed of light is really, really fast. 186,000 miles a second. Wow, that's really, really fast. For myself, when I was uh, much younger, I didn't have such lofty thoughts. Instead, what I was kind of pondering is, took out my calculator, and you can do this too, type in as many nines as you want until you get bored, and then add one. Because I just, I just wanted to see what would happen. I wanted my calculator to scream surrender because it couldn't handle all those zeros. And when you, when you press enter, you get something really unsatisfying. This 1E31. I get 1E31. What do you guys get? 1E48. Okay, so you're much more patient and plugged in a few more nines than I did. But the question is, well, what is this? They're numbers in scientific notation. They relate to powers of 10. Well, let's just take a fun diversion and talk about powers of 10 in this video here. So if you can catch the lights, Ed, how many did you get? Go ahead, brag. Overflow. All right, then you must have gone past 100 then. All right, cool. Uh, Nick, can you get the lights on the sidewall there? Yeah, please. All right, so we're going to start out 10 million light years from home. Now, a light year is about just a little less than 6 trillion miles. It's a long, long ways. And we're starting out 10 million of those away from home. You can barely see the Milky Way galaxy, this little spiral dot here. Every time I press uh, enter here, we're going to zoom in by a power of 10. And we're going to keep on doing that. This whole thing is in powers of 10s, and we're going to zoom in ridiculously close. So 10 million light years away from home. Uh, a million light years away from home, we can start to see roughly where we're at. Earth is on one of the arms of the Milky Way galaxy, one of the spiral arms. So moving in, 100,000 light years from home. I mean, this is ridiculously far away. It would take you 100,000 years traveling at 186,000 miles per second all the time to get where we're at here. Move in a little bit farther, 10,000 light years away from home thousand light years away from home nothing looks familiar yet hundred light years from home ten light years I and mean, this is this is our cosmic neighbors ten ten light years away from home that's pretty close in a cosmic sense finally a light year from home we see something that looks really familiar but it's still pretty small and that's our sun trillion kilometers and then a hundred billion now you can start to see the outlines of the outer orbits of the planets Pluto, of course, is on the outside lane for most of that. Zooming in again, we can see the inner planets, billion kilometers, now 100 million. That's 62, let's see, uh, 62 million miles is about how far away we are. This is Earth's orbit there. Any guesses to what this little white ring is? It's the orbit of the moon. The moon is about 239,000 miles away from Earth on average. gets closer and farther. Uh, 100,000 kilometers, 10,000 kilometers. Zooming in on Florida, the Panhandle, Tallahassee. 100 kilometers. If you were able to drive your car for an hour straight up, you'd be in space. About 100 kilometers up, 62 miles. 10 kilometers is a good popular running race. They actually have a race called Swim to the Moon, in which you can swim a 10-kilometer race. So, wow, pretty cool stuff. Uh, one kilometer, one kilometer, 0.62 miles. 100 meters, just a little bit more than the length of a football field. 10 meters, about the distance across our classroom. One meter, 39 and a half inches. Just a barely over a yard. 10 centimeters. One centimeter, less than the width of your pinky. 2.54 centimeters per inch. One millimeter. So if you take that distance of a meter, a little over a yard, and you chop it up into 1,000 little equal parts, that distance is one millimeter. Let's chop that up by 10 again. Cells on the surface of the leaf. 
Chop it up by 10 again, and 10 one more time. Now we're at one millionth of a meter. So take that distance of one meter and chop it up by one million. That's how far we're zoomed in. Let's keep going. Finally, we're at the DNA strands of uh, the leaf cell, of, uh, of the nucleus of a leaf cell. Nucleotides. Uh, by the way, back here, we're at one billionth of a meter. So chop that meter up into one billion length equal parts, or one billion equal parts, and that's where we're at. Now we're face to face with a carbon atom, and it's going to take me four clicks. Zoom in by 10 to the fourth power in order to really zoom into the nucleus. One, two, three, four. We are remarkably well zoomed in. This is the nucleus of a carbon atom. So these would be the protons. Wow. Face to face with a proton. And the building blocks of protons, and I think this is where the, the chain ends, is quarks. So you're face to face with a quark now. Um, and that's where our journey ends. Yay. So all these relate to powers of 10. Powers of 10, powers of 10. Uh, and that's what we're going to work on is understanding powers of 10 through scientific notation. The reason we introduce scientific notation is because there's a lot of places where you run into some really, really big or really, really small numbers. Numbers like the distance to Pluto, 3.675 billion miles. Or how about uh, the distance to the nearest star? About, I think it's like four and a quarter light years. Anyways, um, there's a lot of zeros here. And it gets boring and tedious to write all these zeros. So we want to do something other than write all these zeros. What would that be? Well, that's where your scientific notation comes into play. A number in scientific notation has this form. It's A times 10 to some power. Now that power, n, has to be an integer. As a reminder here, integer numbers look like this. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So those are, pos those are integers. Positive or negative doesn't matter as long as there's no fractions or no decimals. The exponent has to be an integer. The number out front has to be a number between 1 and 10. Now, the easy way that I can suggest to you to work with this number is to, to write, try and write a number that's between 1 and 10. Or, in other words, it has one digit to the left of the decimal. So the number 9,600, I'm going to write it four different ways, A, B, C, and D. All these mean 9,600. But by the definition in the book and the definition in this course, only one of these is a number in scientific notation. Only one of them has the right form. Let's do it by voting. How many people think the first one's in scientific notation? How about the second one? How about the third one? Two, four, six, eight. I call it ten. How about the fourth one? Three. Let me add a fifth one here. Uh, don't care. No takers on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, I was hoping no one would raise their hand, and I appreciate that you guys didn't raise your hand. Um, all right. Don't know. Maybe choice F. Don't know. All right, and there's a one there. All right, well let's let's try and help that out then. Um, we're looking for a number here, this first part to the left of, you know, the times ten, that's between one and ten. So nine hundred sixty. Well, that's not between one and ten. So that one's out. Is ninety six between one and ten? No. How about 9.6? Is that between 1 and 10? Yes. 
Yes. 0.96, that's less than 1. So we throw that all out. And this one we'll throw out just because you're trying to learn this stuff. So only one of these instances in scientific notation. When I ask you on the test to write something in scientific notation, this one is what I'd expect. Not that these aren't equivalent to 9,600. They're just not in scientific notation. So how's that going to work in practice? Well, let's take a look at 47,500. This currently is in decimal notation. Our goal is to write it in scientific notation. So the decimal is understood to be here. Let's see how far we have to move it in order to get a number in scientific notation. So 1, 2, so now I'm at 4, 475. Is 475 between 1 and 10? No. Keep going. 47.5. Not far enough. There we go. 4.75. Now how many places did I move it? I moved it a total of four places. So I'm going to compensate by multiplying by 10 to the fourth power. So 4.75 times 10 to the 4th power. Your turn for 1. 186,000 miles per second, the speed of light. The decimal is here. One thing to be careful of when you're putting a number in scientific notation, all we're doing is we're going to get rid of trailing zeros or leading zeros. Don't round these. Don't go 1.9 times 10 to the sum power. It's going to be 1.86 times 10 to a particular power. Jimmy, what are we going to get? Uh, 1.86 times 10 to the fifth power. Well done. 1.86 times 10 to the fifth power. When I started teaching this course back in 19 Mumble Mumble, the uh, population of the Earth was less than 6 billion. Autumn? Well, let's take a look uh, here. 1, 2, 3, 4, eh, 5. If I go further, then I'd have 0.186. 0.186 is not in this interval. Okay. No, it's all right. All right, so like I said, when I first started teaching this course, population of the Earth was less than 6 billion. Now we've got 7 billion. Wow. Get your lakefront property now. It's going to get crowded. Let's write this in uh, scientific notation. Decimals understood to be here. Figure out how far you have to move that in order to have a number between 1 and 10. But it has to be less than 10. Rochelle, want to try that one? How far do you have to move it? Good. So 7.373 times 10 to the 9th. Uh, depends if you want it right. Uh, you do need all the digits. So, yes, please put the 373. Do not, do not lose anything other than the zeros. Those are the only things that we should get rid of. Okay. Uh, now, with these, I mean, sometimes I take advantage of the fact that you've got groups of three here. One, two, three. That worked out pretty nice. Three times three is nine, ten to the ninth. When you have really, really small numbers, typically you don't separate those with commas. On exams, when I give you a really, really small number, what I like to do is kind of put a little extra space in there so you can still count them in groups of three. It's a little easier to 
look at. But let's see about putting this into scientific notation. So how far do I have to move to get in scientific notation? 3, 6, 9, 12. Is that enough? What do I have to do? How much farther do I have to go? One more. I need to go until I have exactly one digit to the left of the decimal. So this is going to work out to 1.4 times 10. Would it be 10 to the 13th? Negative 13th. Times 10 to the positive 13th would be a really, really, really big number. If protons were that big, they'd be enormous. Uh, fortunately, they're not. Let's try another one like that out of the book. It's problem number 34. Point zero 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 seven three. And again, the goal is to write this in scientific notation. See about moving the decimal until you get a, to a place where there's one digit to the left of the decimal. And then write it in scientific notation. How far would you have to move the decimal in that case? All right, so one, two, three, four places. So Derek, in scientific notation, what would that look like then? Good, 7.3 times 10 to the negative fourth. Let's take a look at these last two examples. Because I want to point out something that's helpful when you're work, working with things that have negative exponents, when you're working with really, really small numbers. How many zeros did I have here? 12. And I end up with a negative 13 in the exponent. How many zeros did I have here? 3. And I end up with a negative 4 in an exponent. You see a little pattern here, a little similarity between the exponent and the number of leading zeros. 12, negative 13. 3, negative 4. What's the pattern? What would you do if you wanted to take kind of a shortcut? Yeah, count the zeros and add 1. 12 zeros plus 1 gives me 13. So there'd be a negative 13 exponent. Three zeros plus one gives me a negative four for the exponent. So let's go up here. Part C. The mass of an electron. It just amazes me that somebody can figure this out. That's like really, 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 really small. So I'll give you a few choices here. It's going to be 9.109 times 10 to some power. Negative 39, negative 40, negative 41, and don't know. So I took a little bit of a shortcut here myself. Not sure if you guys did likewise. So maybe we should vote on it again. How many say A? How many say B? All right. Wow, unanimous. Well done. We've got a total of 13 sets of 3. So 3 times 13 is 39. Add 1 to that. The exponent here should be negative 40. So, well done. Oh, let's put in some units as well. Kilograms. 
Now this relationship is nice because we can also go backwards. There's a 40 here. That means there should be 39 leading zeros. Let's go down to the bottom here. Your chances of being struck by lightning. Of course, I think this is like a, a statewide average. Your chances of getting struck by lightning, I think, are highest in Florida. California might be high. Michigan's not so high. So various states to say, but let's just take this as an average. See if you can't write this in decimal notation. Let's go backwards. So it'd be like starting out with something like this and writing it in decimal notation. Go the other way. What would this one look like in decimal notation? Or, yeah, decimal notation. How many leading zeros am I going to have? How many? No. That would be a lot of zeros. Unfortunately, our chances are a little bit higher than that. Well, remember the relationship here, right? There's a thir negative 13 for the exponent meant 12 leading zeros. Negative 4 for the exponent meant 3 leading zeros. So the number of leading zeros is going to be, right, it's going to be 1 less than this. So 5 leading zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we need to write the 1, 6, 7. Again, don't round these. Don't lose any significant figures there. All right, are we okay with that one? Um, let's take a quick look at this one. Going the other direction. Again, starting out in decimal notation and ending up with scientific notation. 1.14 times 10 to the 8th. Now, times 10 to the 8th, is that going to make this a really, really big number or a really, really small number? Big. So which way should I move the decimal? To the right or to the left? To the right. If I want to make this a big number, I'm going to move it to the right. So 1, 2. What am I going to do after this? I ran out of places. Zeros. I'd appreciate it if you rewrite it. Don't leave it like this. No, some less hybrid answer. 114 million, and that distance would be miles. Nice. On an exam, what you can expect is kind of exactly what you see with these last four here. That is, to start out with a big number, put it in scientific notation. A small number, put it in scientific notation. A big number in scientific notation, put it in decimal notation. And a small number in scientific notation, put it in decimal notation. What we have to finish up is um, a little bit about uh, how to use your calculator. Before I get there, let me just kind of mention something by way of pop culture here for us. What's your favorite search engine on the Internet? Google. All right. Everyone knows Google. Um, but what you might not know is where they got the name. Now, Google... The search engine is spelled this way, but Google, the math term, means 1 times 10 to the 100th power. So it's basically a 1 followed by 100 zeros. And the idea with, uh, what's his name, Larry Page, I think was one of the co-founders, graduate at the University of Michigan. Um, his idea is that you can search for a Google amount of things on Google. They just spelled it differently. And then... We're going to take this idea and put it on steroids. So just 10 to the 100th power. Uh, there's something called a Google Plex. And it's 10 raised to the Google power. Or 10 
raised to the 10 to the 100th power. That's a Googleplex. That's an enormously, it's a ridiculously big number. But it makes its uh, way into uh, stuff like The Simpsons. Now, it used to be that they would call theaters multiplex, cinemaplex, etc. So, of course, in Springfield, uh, Illinois, you have a Googleplex where, right here. No, let's just go with this one. Visit page. Uh, no, I don't, didn't want to visit page. What do I want to do? I wanted to visit image. There we go. There we go. A Googleplex. Ah, so they, they throw in a little math humor there for you in, in The Simpsons. Of course, we've mentioned that before. Uh, so how do you do this stuff on your calculator then? It's a good question. Take out your calculators. Let's work on problem number 62. Four point one times ten to the negative third times three times ten to the fourth power. Now, if I was just doing this by hand, what I could do is this. I'd rewrite that as four point one times three times ten to the negative third times ten to the fourth. Just kind of reorder things because multiplication can be done in any order. Commutative is the fancy word there. 3 times 4.1 gives you 12.3. Help me out here. 10 to the negative third times 10 to the fourth power. What would that give me? 10 to the first. Thanks, Brian. 10 to the first. Important question here for you. Is that in scientific notation? No. I need to move the decimal one place to the left. So I get 1.23, and that means I'd have to add 1 to the exponent. So 1.23 times 10 squared. Take out your calculators. Let's see about doing it here. I heard a long time ago what this was supposed to mean. And I actually got into Texas Instruments website or called up their support line just to ask them. EE stands for enter exponent. So that's the key we're going to use. Of course, it's right above the comma. You have to hit the second button to get there. Uh, that's the key we're going to use to help enter in numbers like this. Now, we don't necessarily need it, but for our peace of mind, let's put parentheses around this. So left parenthesis, 4.1. Then hit the second key, then the comma. That's going to allow us to enter in the exponent. What exponent do I want to enter in? Negative 3. Negative 3, parenthesis. Left parenthesis. 3, second, comma, 4. Now, it's not necessarily going to give me a number of scientific notation, but I think we can take 123 and turn it into a number in scientific notation, correct? You just move it two places to the left, and you get 1.23 times 10 squared. So you get the same answer. It's not, like I said, necessarily going to put it in scientific notation for you. Let's try another one like that just to make sure we're comfortable with the graphing or with your calculator and exponents. Is there, uh, do you need some help on that one? Um, yours, I'm sure. Well, I don't know. Bring it up here. Um, I'll take a look at it. So, yeah, yours has it right here on the face. So you don't have to hit that at all. You can just do um, 3, enter exponent, say 4. And then that's it. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, yours also has... Well, I'm sure it has it someplace, but um, you want to throw it on. There we go. 
Okay, so like I said, I want to do one more like the previous one. Let's do problem number 60, uh, 66. Two point four seven times ten to the fifth. Divided by three point eight times ten to the negative fifth. So again, it's it's best and easiest if we put these into our graphing calculators or whatever scientific calculator that you have. There's fancier ways I can do it, but I'm just going to use parentheses around it. 2.47 second comma 5, and then a right parenthesis. Divided by left parenthesis, 3.8 second comma negative 5. Now, when you put that in that negative 5, make sure that you use the opposite key on the bottom of your calculator right here, not the subtraction key. You'll get an error if you try and use this to put in a negative five as an exponent. Now, it may not give me a number of scientific notation. It might just give me, you know, a big number of decimal notation, but that's okay. Let's turn this into scientific notation. So we gotta count how many zeros there are. Or actually, have to, how far we have to move it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm getting eight. Got nine. Take it. One, two, three, four, five, nine. Yeah, nine. All right, so. 6.5 times 10 to the 9th would be your final answer in scientific notation. No, this will be fine. I, I kind of expect you guys to be able to do it on your calculators. So, yeah, there's not much work to show there. I mean, you could. Um, if you divided this by this, you're going to get 0.65. This divided by this gives you 10 to the 10th when you subtract exponents. And then you turn that into something in scientific notation because right now that's not in scientific notation. So, yeah, if you wanted to show that, hey, maybe I'll give you an extra credit point or so. Are you okay with those? Last one. Problem number 91. A light year is given as 5.87 times 10 to the 12th miles. They ask you to convert it to feet. They helpfully give you that 5,280 feet are in one mile. So if I want to convert this to feet, I'm going to multiply by 1. I'm going to multiply by 1 in a clever form. There's 1 mile in 5,280 feet. So why am I multiplying it this, this way? Exactly so that I'm getting these units to cancel. The units uh, of miles cancels. I'll be left with units of feet. So it really works out to 5.87 times 10 to the 12 times 5280. So I'll plug that in your calculator and see what it gives you. Now, when you give me, give me your answers, please don't round them. Please give me all the significant digits that are there. 
What does this translate to? 3.09936E16? Good. This part stands for times 10 to the 16th. Uh, I would appreciate that you write it like that. I'm not going to be really a big fan of writing it with an E. All right. Your calculator can do that. That's fine. But make sure you know what this means. For homework. Section 5.3, homework, try 13 through 23, 29 through 45, 51 through 57, and 61 through 75. See ya!